Hello, Simon again from Odd Planet Studios. Today it's just a quick video and I'm going to talk about one of these. And this is a Y-axis winder which is available to download for free for 3D printing um, from my mini factory and it's made by Friendly Beans. Okay, well here it is. Um, as you can see, it's a fairly substantial piece of kit. Um, it's got a, a control knob with a gear underneath which runs along this rack here and then a little locking knob here, rather like the winder boxes themselves. The rack, the vertical rack, fits in to this little um, adapter here and uh, it all moves along quite comfortably. The holes here are to fit a weight plate which drops in like that and that just helps to to hold the thing and anchor it down there are also a couple of countersunk holes in the uh, in the base plate so you could screw that down the carriage sits on top of the uh, the rail and it's held in with a couple of brakes and these have got PTFE strips on them and they're bolted on on either side and they just hold it down onto the rail so the carriage has also got PTFE strips inside and you can see there that's the that's the gear it's exactly like the ones that are used on the on the winders you probably want to adjust these so they're fairly snug so that there's quite a bit of resistance as it's moving along if you if you do it so that it's too loose then the whole thing's going to uh, slop around a bit this one as i say i printed out with a 0.6 nozzle and i don't know it's just there's a little bit of sideways movement you might just be able to see that um, which isn't great the other one i did with a, um, a 0.4 nozzle and that worked a lot better that one that one seems to have much tighter not nearly so much sideways slop. Now one thing to watch out for with this, um, which is really important, is that when you put the bolt in for the control knob, it's actually about three mil too long. I don't know if you can see that there, but there's a little gap and it means that it actually hits the bottom of the, the rail. So that needs to be uh, trimmed off. So fitting this in is not the easiest thing in the world. You've got to hold that off the deck there and then you can see I've got a little bit of plastic there which is just helping to keep it tight. And then once that's down, that should be fairly solid. There we go, that's it. Now if you push the wedge all the way down, that also hits the bottom. So you either need to uh, trim it a little bit or make sure that it doesn't go all the way down there. So how does it work? Well, obviously it's not going to take much of a load without, without tipping unless it's screwed down. And that's really where the weight plate comes in. So you can put that down like that and then it's still going to move a little bit, but I think, I think it'll, it's going to work reasonably well. Okay, so if we just compare this for a moment to my big slider, this one is actually a metre long and it's made in aluminium and you can see it's quite substantial. It's got a locking nut on it. It hasn't got a, a winder knob, but I can move it along. I've got an Ikea um, paper tape on here with measurements so that I can move it along a specific amount, whatever I need. And it's huge. Um, it's also incredibly rigid. The other beauty of this big one is that it can be mounted at any, in any orientation. I sometimes had it overhead. If you did want to mount one of these vertically, all you'd need is the little bracket, which you could screw onto it, and then one of the ordinary winder boxes, and then you can control your puppet from above and of course move it along in increments as you wish and lock that one down for each shot. This has got the great advantage of leaving the set completely clear. So if you've got a puppet, say, leaping over bushes or logs or something like that, you can lift the puppet up and move the arms and legs around and then drop them back down into position without any risk of disturbing the set. But I think I've got to be fair about this one. It's not pretending to be the world's most rigid and solid piece. 
this is going to actually do really pretty well. My biggest criticism is actually to do with the fixing of the rack into the, uh, the, the, the slider unit itself. I've actually already suggested to Luke that he might consider redesigning this little part here. Maybe to have um, a little M5 bolt uh, which would go through here and would just tighten up so that you can get that as firm as possible. I think that would improve the stability of it. Okay, well, I hope you'll agree that it's uh, a reasonably handy piece of kit. Certainly it's a very good value. I mean, it's a free download. I'll put a link, by the way, into the, uh, into the description below. And uh, I think he's done a good job designing it. Of course, plastic is always going to be, you know, it's going to move around a bit more than metal. And so if you want something incredibly sturdy, you've got to go for really a metal slider. Um, but given that, I think it does a good job. Okay, well, I hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, see you next time.